next let us look at the standard of time uh, for the standard of time we define the second the second as the nine one nine two six three one seven seven zero times the period time the period of the vibration time the period of the vibration of radiation from the cesium One three three atom. Okay. Uh, the principle of this clock is that when we give the energy to the atom, it will be it will go into the excited state. Okay. And but everything like to stay in the lowest energy state as possible. So the atom will try to return to the ground state and when it returns to the ground state it will give back the energy in terms of radiation uh, the frequency of radiation has some definite value and it depends on the type of the atom uh, and in this topic you will study it in more detail in physics too uh, but the main thing here is that when the energy, uh, when the atom is excited to the excited state, and when it come back to the ground state, it will give the radiation, and this the radiation has a color, uh, is the the frequency of the radiation uh, depend on the type of the atom. So. If we know the frequency, you can see that we have the relation that the frequency F is equal to 1 over T. Here, T T is a period. Okay. So it means that once you know the frequency, you know the period from the relation. T is equal to the 1 over F. And if the frequency is a characteristic of the atom that gives the radiation, so it means that if you know the atom you can have the frequency, uh, the frequency, and once you have the frequency, you can calculate the period. So we can use this as the standard of time, and you can see that this is the natural standard. Because we can assume that the cesium atom exists everywhere in the universe so you can create the same standard anywhere in the universe um, from the technology today we can create this kind of atomic clock and this atomic clock uh, this atomic clock is neither gain or 
plus a second in 20 million years so it's, it's very accurate so we can use this as a standard time and you can see the number again that we define that the second is the 9 of 9 one nine two six three one seven seven zero times the period of the vibration. So you <coughs> we use the period of the vibration as the standard and we it means that the frequency of this radiation is the reciprocal of this long number. And when you uh, calculate the uh, reciprocal of this of the frequency again, you will get the time, the standard time. Uh, here in Thailand, we also have the institute that keep that keep the uh, national standard also, and the name of the institute is the National Institute of Metallurgy. Thailand or in short it is the uh, NIM T Na National Institute of Metallurgy. Metallurgy is the science of measurement. It's a sign of measurement. Okay. Uh, for the standard of link, they use the wavelength of the helium neon laser as the standard of link, and it can be traced back to the uh, primary standard of link as we, as I mentioned before. Okay. And this laser is stabilized by the art, uh, another iodine uh, laser. Okay, this is for the standard of length. For the standard of mass, we also do the same as in the uh, previous figure. That is, we have to build the copy of the standard kilogram like here the copy of the standard kilogram and we keep it in the uh, National Institute of Metallurgy and this standard kilogram is uh, the copy number 80 they give the number so this is the number 80 from the uh, original standard kilogram and we also have the cesium clock. We also have the cesium clock at the institute to keep to keep the standard of time in our nation in our country. So we have both. Uh, we have all three uh, standard basic standard. We, uh, in this institute, they also have the, a lot of uh, standards, like the standard of the, the electrical standard, the, the optical standard, the, the, the temperature standard. And if you are interested, you can go to their website to see uh, uh, what and how many standards they have. Again, this uh, table gives you some uh, example of the measure quantity of mass and time. And I have to say that you, sh uh, you should familiar with this kind of number. And it will give you the last idea of the size of the mass and of the time uh, in nature. 
okay <clears throat> and when you look at the, the definition of length and of time you can see that we have the very long very long number you can see it, 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 it the, the number is very long so sometimes it's better to, to use the prefix to express the number okay, and uh, use a scientific notation uh, to express the number in this table it gives you uh, the prefix that um, you must be familiar with some prefix like the kilo is mean the thousand uh, the giga is mean the uh, 10 to the 9 is mean the, the the thousand of million or the billion okay uh, the centi is uh, 100 it means the one in the hundred part, okay, or the milli is the one in the thousand part, or the micro is one to the million part, uh, and nano is one in the billion part, thing like this. So we use this frequently in in our uh, calculation. So try to be familiar with this kind of prefix and before we leave this section this is one thing that I want to remind you again that generating intuition about typical values of quantities when solving problems is important because you must think about your end results and mean if it seems reasonable for example if you are calculating the mass of a house fry and arrive at a value of 100 kg the fry 100 kg that is impossible and you can know that this answer is unreasonable and there is an error somewhere so if you are familiar with some typical value of mass of time and of length it will be helped very much when you solve your problem.